The C sub B parameter is a parameter that tells you how quickly a layer consolidates. Okay? And that depends on the compressibility of the soil. So let's say the stiffness, which is the inverse of the compressibility. Okay? And it also depends on the hydraulic conductivity of the soil. Okay? So the C sub B is a function of stiffness and hydraulic conductivity. Now, how do we calculate this? You will learn this, this exactly the procedure, etc., how to calculate C sub B from the lab course, okay? But it's important, of course, that you realize, at least have an idea of the essence of how we get it. Remember from the Consolidation 1 videos that we plotted void ratio versus time. Okay, and we said, okay, we have our specimen in the consolidometer in the lab at E0, right? And then we load it with a specific stress. And what happens is the specimen consolidates. It takes some time to consolidate, it takes some time for the void ratio to reach the new void ratio, say EA, okay? And that consolidation stage was due to the initial load that was placed on the specimen. This is for the lab, remember, you can go back to the, to the videos from consolidation one. Okay, then what we do is we take this EA and plot it versus the stress that cost that cost that void ratio reduction, right? So, we get a point here. This would be the stress that caused that, that reduction. It's effective <clears throat> because at this point in time, starting from here onwards, this is constant, the void ratio is constant, so <coughs> consolidation has ended at this point. Essentially, consolidation took place from time equals zero to this time. Okay? Maybe, I don't know, six hours six hours, whatever, okay? The idea is that you look at this, this curve here. So I'm going to zoom in, of course, well, let's just finish from, with this discussion to review. After the, after the specimen consolidates for that load, we add an, another load and the specimen consolidates again. And again, and again, and again, etc. And so here you have EB. And so you end up taking all these points and eventually you get the consolidation curve, which reveals the sigma p prime. Okay? This is just a review from what we have seen before. Let's look at this portion of the curve. Okay? If we look at that portion of the curve, we get the following. time, right? Uh, sorry. Okay. Yes. So this is the behavior of the soil, the void ratio reduction, the squeezing of the specimen due to consolidation, the consolidation process that was caused by the placement of a weight on top of the specimen. Okay. Now, Actually, we did talk about this before. We said, okay, let's say that this is a clay, right? Clay, clay number one. Let's say that we bring another clay to the lab, and that clay has a lower hydraulic conductivity than the clay, uh, than clay one. So clay number two has a lower hydraulic conductivity than clay one. So uh, what, so this is high plasticity, let's say, clay one. What's going to happen if we do the, the, the same thing, the same procedure, we place the same load, etc., everything the same, starting at the same void ratio, let's say, okay, with the clay that, um, with the clay that is clay number two, that has a lower hydraulic conductivity. Well, it's going to take longer to consolidate, right, because the water has a harder time flowing through that soil. So we may end up with something that looks like that. Okay, that is the curve for clay two. Now, what happens if we bring a silt, 
silt has a higher hydraulic conductivity than clay. Well, in that case, if we do the same thing to that soil and say that we begin with the same void ratio, a material, then consolidation will take place faster. In this example, I'm assuming that the three uh, soils, this is a silt, let's say low plasticity silt or something like that, I am assuming by, that by coincidence, the three specimens reach the same void ratio due to the same load. But that may not happen. You can bring a loose silt, even though we don't really use loose for silt, but you can use the open fabric silt that starts at this void ratio and then it goes like this maybe. Okay, with the same load, but it, it, um, it suffers a higher void ratio reduction than does the initial silt, for example. Okay, that depends on the initial fabric, etc. What, what is important here is how quickly, how quickly the deformation incurred by consolidation for a given load occurs. Okay, does it take one hour, or does it take three hours, or does it take I don't know, five hours, okay, for the specimen to consolidate. With this data, we can get C sub V. So C sub V is a function of how quickly the specimen consolidates in the lab. What specimen? The one that we... Oh, sorry. C sub V is a function of how quickly the specimen consolidates in the lab. What specimen? The one that we remove from the soil layer to determine C sub C, to determine C sub R, sigma P prime, and E naught. Okay? So, this, this plot, this plot that is used to get this plot, this data is also used to get C sub V. Okay. This is a sum, sum of, the, of that initial raw data, right? So of, for four specimens. So what we do is we determine, we draw uh, slopes, two slopes, one that, that, that um, it's part of the, it, it covers the initial portion of the curve and then we offset that by a certain amount and then we do some calculations to determine the C sub P. The important thing is that you're going to learn how to do all that in the lab. It's in the book if you want to read it. Of course, I highly encourage that you read it, how to determine C sub V. But for this course, what is important is essentially what C sub V is a function of. It's a function of the stiffness of the soil and the hydraulic conductivity. And essentially it's obtained from a lab test, the consolidation lab test, and uh, it's a function, it's value, it's a function of how quickly the specimen consolidates in the lab. The C sub V is called the coefficient of consolidation, and the units are typically meters squared uh, per day. Okay, so length squared over time, those are the units of C sub V. And this is generally the way that they are, that the units are presented, in meters squared over time. Okay, so at this point, we're going to finish, this is the end of this video, part one, and the next video, we're going to learn how to solve problems, essentially we're going to go about doing examples so that you can see how we go about using the generic plot.